Good afternoon, everybody. Good to see you again. So, welcome again to this lecture. We will continue today to discuss about business environment. But before we do that, we will have a, a short quiz. And this will pretty much uh, cover the last two lectures that we have had. I mean, the, the lecture we had last last week uh, on Tuesday and the previous lectures. Are you ready for it? So for those of you who have not done it before, so you go to kahoot.it and you will be asked to provide a, the pin for the game, and that is the pin, 
And the last question is, so you, you, you'll get one minute for, for this one? And the winner is Hope. Who is he or she? Oh, there he is. Deserves a round of a clap. <laughs> so that's it. And for those of you who were not here last time, uh, the last question is the computation of the effective uh, cost per thousand. And the formula is. You divide the total earnings by number of views multiplied by a thousand. You can review the notes, and you will, we did a, a couple of examples uh, in the last uh, lecture. So to, today we will continue discussing uh, business environment. A as you remember, uh, I introduced it uh, last time that all businesses are surrounded by various factors, and we call this business environment, the different elements that affect uh, our businesses. So this could be direct effect or indirect effect. And based on the uh, extent or uh, the influence of the envi uh, environment, this can be distinguished into two types. That is microenvironment and microenvironment. Microenvironment are those factors that have uh, direct effect on, on your business. So we spoke about customers, we, we spoke about suppliers, uh, distribution agents. So all the 
actors and factors that are immediate to your business constitute what we call microenvironment. And that was the subject uh, of our discussion in, on Tuesday. So we, we, we looked at microenvironment, and in addition to that, we also looked at business uh, models. And specifically, we, we looked at different business, uh, online uh, business models. So today, our focus will be on the microenvironment, that is, factors that have indirect effect on your businesses. And these are social uh, factors, economic factors, uh, technological factors, political factors, all these uh, factors that are operating in the environment that, and have a bearing on your business. And the, all these factors are important because they can determine the performance of your business. And in many ways, uh, the type of environment or the kind of environment that you are, your business is facing can determine the success or failure of your business. So today we will go through uh, all these factors and how they, uh, and how they uh, affect uh, businesses and what measures as a business man major, uh, manager you should take with respect to each of these uh, factors. So if you look, go through traditional uh, strategy literature, these factors are referred to as pesty factors in the sense uh, meaning that uh, as an abbreviation to political, economic, and uh, social, cultural, and technological factors. But uh, in this class, we will use a different uh, abbreviation, and that is SLEPT. SLEPT uh, an, uh, as an abbreviation to social factors, legal and ethical factors, economic factors, political factors, and te technological factors. If you look at those factors, they are not that different from pest factors, only that we emphasize uh, legal and ethical factors because as we saw uh, last time when we discussed a uh, uh, Facebook uh, case study, uh, issues uh, regarding privacy, eth ethics, uh, security are uh, of paramount uh, importance when it comes to digital businesses. So uh, to emphasize the importance of the, uh, of, of the implication of ethics and legal issues, we decided to treat it separately and have these five factors, but otherwise uh, the content is uh, pretty much the, the same as uh, in the pest analysis, only that we put much more emphasis on legal and ethical factors. So we will start uh, our discussion with uh, social factors, and by social factors we refer to all the factors uh, like in the society, such as uh, lifestyle trends, uh, democratic, uh, demographics, consumer attitudes and preferences, uh, media views, brand, uh, company or technology, maybe consumer buying patterns, changes in fashion, uh, events uh, that happen in this society. So all, all these uh, dynamics that are going on in the uh, society have an impact on your business because to a large extent, this determine the uh, uh, demand for the products uh, of your services. Also, uh, they determine acceptability of your business uh, in the society where you are operating. So it, it's important to uh, look at these factors because in many ways they, they will determine to what extent your business will succeed in a particular uh, society. So with respect to, to e-commerce, one of the uh, factors that he, uh, the social factors that you need to consider uh, is the use of uh, technology in the in in the in the society where you are you are uh, operating. So it is important for business managers to understand uh, different factors that are affect the use of uh, uh, internet, because uh, as we we know that digital business relies so much on uh, uh, on the internet and related technologies so uh, this is uh, one of the uh, it's first and foremost thing that you need to to consider that how the society in which you are operating 
using the internet and to what extent uh, the internet has penetrated uh, in that uh, society and how is it uh, used, how is it perceived. And by having knowledge about uh, such factors, you will be able to create an appropriate strategy uh, for your uh, business. For, for instance, we, we know that uh, fears about uh, internet are widespread, that people are so much worried uh, about uh, security. We, we will see it uh, in a couple of uh, minutes uh, when we discuss about uh, privacy and security issues. So w when you know to, to what extent the people in, that, in the society where you're operating are comfortable about using internet and internet-related uh, services, then you will know how to create a strategy uh, to overcome if there are any challenges or if uh, to take advantage of the opportunities that are presented in a particular uh, society. There are a couple of uh, factors that affect the adoption of uh, internet or for that matter uh, electronic commerce. That we know that not all societies uh, are, are using electronic commerce uh, at the same level. Uh, it, the, the extent to which uh, e-commerce uh, is applied or is used differ from one society to, to another society. So it's important to know in the society where you're operating, uh, to what extent uh, uh, internet and related technologies are, are, are used. And these are some of the factors that affect uh, the extent to which uh, a society uh, or a community uses uh, e-commerce and uh, technolo technologies that facilitate e-commerce. So we will go through these uh, factors one after another. The first one is uh, cost of uh, access, and this is uh, quite obvious that in order to access uh, these uh, services, uh, we need to incur some cost. Of course, the costs uh, differ from country to country, but generally there is a price that people have to, 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 to pay. So depending on the, uh, the purchasing power of people, the income levels, this is a barrier. Uh, it affects people's uh, uh, societies in different ways, d depending on the uh, economic conditions of, of countries. So in, in some countries, uh, cost of access uh, is quite a serious issue. But in some countries where the, the, the economy is good and people have uh, high purchasing power, it may not be such a serious uh, uh, barrier. And the cost uh, is mostly much more serious when it comes to uh, mobile services, like uh, when we have a connection to our mobile devices, uh, the, the price, uh, uh, you need to pay uh, price uh, for that. And in some countries or in some societies, uh, that cost is quite high, which may limit uh, uh, people from using internet services. So if you are going to, uh, to start a, a, an online business, you need to, to know the, how accessible internet is in that uh, uh, market and uh, whether it's a, a barrier for people to access the internet. Because with, with an online business, uh, the internet is the main channel through which you will interact with your uh, your customers. So it's, it's very important to consider uh, the accessibility uh, of, of the, uh, the, the service or, uh, the, and the internet for, for that matter. So companies are, are taking initiatives uh, to, to, to increase uh, accessibility of the internet. We, we discussed this uh, briefly uh, last time, the um, internet.org. Uh, this is an initiative of uh, technology companies that are trying to, to connect uh, the world. They are trying to make the internet uh, accessible to, to, to as, as many people uh, as possible. And this is a recognition of the fact that uh, not everyone in the world is uh, able to afford uh, to, ac to access the internet. So these uh, companies have joined their efforts to, to make uh, internet uh, uh, available to, to the world. And this is a win-win situation because uh, by being able to have as many people as possible uh, on board, that are be, uh, as many people as possible being able to access the internet, uh, these companies also are able to increase their user base. So a company like uh, uh, Facebook d depends very much on the 
uh, user base. And uh, for them, if uh, many people have access to the internet, uh, then they have a higher chance to, to attract as many people as possible to, to their platform. And it turns out to be a win-win situation. It's uh, good for, for the people that are allowed to access the internet because uh, with the internet, they will have access uh, not only to uh, companies that are behind this, but also they will have access to other services, um, knowledge, information, and so on. So as a business manager, you might consider uh, making it possible for people to access your, your services. Although for small and medium companies, this is quite challenging because uh, uh, when your company is small, you are struggling with the capital. You can't do much probably uh, trying to help people access the internet, but you can do whatever you can with whatever uh, you have. The most important thing is to, to understand that not everyone can access the internet and you need to uh, think about um, accessibility of the internet in the environment where you are you're planning to, to, to operate your, uh, your business. The second factor is uh, value proposition. Uh, and what we're saying is uh, the challenge may not be uh, cost of accessing the internet, but uh, the issue may be whether people realize uh, the value of accessing uh, the, the internet, or in this case, the value of accessing the whatever services that you are trying to propose to, uh, to, to consumers. So people might, might, might ask them, uh, themselves, why should I access this service uh, online and not uh, offline? So you, as we, we have uh, discussed uh, earlier when we talked about uh, value proposition, you need to give people good reasons. Why is it uh, convenient or why is it advantages for them to access whatever services that you are trying to, to offer them uh, uh, online? Whether it's uh, through increasing uh, convenience, whether it's through uh, reducing uh, cost or maximizing their user experience, whatever benefits that you have uh, to offer. The most important thing is that uh, you need to recognize that sometimes people don't go for online services because they do not appreciate uh, the value that is delivered through this uh, uh, channel. So you need to give a reason why your customers should access your services through uh, online channels. Another challenge is uh, ease of, of use. And of course, this has to do with uh, generations that some users uh, would like to access these services uh, uh, online, but uh, it might be challenging uh, for them when, when it comes to use. And this is not just about uh, age. This uh, uh, goes even uh, deeper than that. It, it may have to do with the uh, ease of use of your platform. You may have a, uh, a website that has a, a very complicated interface, uh, I would say, uh, making it very convenient for people to use. So you, you need to consider the, the fact that uh, you, you have to make it as easy as uh, it could be uh, for your consumers, uh, consumers to, to interact uh, with your website. Uh, have you experienced uh, at some point that you wanted to buy something and the procedure was very complicated. You just decided to drop the transaction. And this is what we are talking about here, that if you make uh, uh, the interface in, in your website so complicated, uh, consumers may just get bored and decide to choose another uh, provider. So you need to, to know that uh, ease of use is one of the uh, factors that can affect uh, the use of online uh, services. Another issue is uh, security. So there is a wide uh, perception in the society that uh, uh, the internet is not safe, that uh, the information we, we provide on, on, the, the, um, uh, on the internet, the transactions uh, we, we perform may not be that secure. And of course, we hear a lot of stories uh, about uh, uh, security uh, issues uh, on the internet. So. To some people, this is a, a, a serious uh, barrier from using uh, uh, internet uh, uh, services. And of course, it will take some time for, for this, uh, for fear about uh, security to completely uh, go away because uh, almost we still hear a lot of issues about uh, security. 
And as we will discuss a little bit uh, uh, later, what this means to, to you as a business manager mm -hmm. is you need to understand that uh, this is a, is a serious issue in the society and you need to provide for mechanisms to make people feel safe when they are using your, your, your platform. We will discuss later some principles uh, that you need to consider uh, when you're uh, doing business uh, or, or online. But for now, you just have to, to, to know that uh, security is an issue. Yes, you have a question, please? I still, I still have a question. Uh, what value proposition of an online business? Uh, a, a value proposition, uh, I said, is the promise that uh, uh, you yeah. as a, uh, a business uh, or service provider, or in this case, uh, an, a business enterprise, the promise that you are giving your co co consumers of what they will receive by buying your goods or your services. So what do you have to, to offer? Put it in other words, it's the reason why someone should buy from you and not from someone else. So it's a way of uh, selling yourself that uh, it, with this uh, service, this is what uh, I have to, 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 to offer. And this is a promise that uh, you need to, to hold, that people indeed have to experience what you, you say that you, you will offer them. Fear of the unknown. Of course, this is uh, related to the uh, previous uh, factor that still people are afraid about what is uh, uh, is going on in, uh, uh, on the internet, and this may pose as a barrier to, to adapt, uh, adapting the uh, internet-based uh, uh, services. So as I said earlier, uh, as a business manager, you, you need to address these factors. Being aware that this could pose a challenge to, to your consumers, you need to provide uh, measures that we will discuss uh, later that will help to eliminate these fears. Because, uh, of course, now we are getting used to uh, using the internet and accessing various services uh, online. But still, this is an ongoing experience. So we still need to make people uh, comfortable about uh, accessing our services uh, online. Because this is still uh, an issue in, in, in the society. Of course. We, we have talked about uh, adopt, uh, adoption of uh, internet uh, services and internet penetration. This is not the same, as I said earlier. It's not the same uh, in all countries. It, it differs from country to, to country. Countries like uh, Norway, the internet penetration is quite high. In fact, um, uh, N Norway and Iceland is one of the countries where the internet uh, penetration is very, very high. So. If you're starting a, a, a business in Norway, you might take it for, for granted that you, can, you don't even need to think about whether your uh, consumers will have access to internet or not, because this is quite obvious. Almost every household has access to the internet. But if you think about uh, extending your business to other countries, you need to consider the fact that not every country is like Norway. In some countries, the penetration rate is still very low and you need to uh, make assessment of the penetration uh, level. So there are countries where you may have to consider having your operations offline because the, the access to the internet is not available to everyone and if you decide to go completely online, you may not be able to reach uh, a huge volume of customers as you would wish. So these are statistics uh, and these are from last year 2014 showing uh, the penetration uh, level of internet uh, across Europe and you have um, some countries that are quite high in terms of penetration Norway Iceland Sweden uh, Denmark the Netherlands and others and also you have other countries that, uh, where the penetration is uh, quite low. Of course, this status is changing from time to time. So whenever you, co you consider uh, expanding your business operations to other countries, you need to 
make assessment uh, of internet uh, penetration. And of course, it, internet penetration goes hand in hand with the uh, number of people that are using uh, the internet. And in fact, those percentages are uh, based on the number of people uh, in a population that are using the, the internet uh, uh, at the time uh, being. So you have countries like uh, Norway where, where you, the proportion is quite high. 4.5 million and the Norwegian population right now is around 5 million. So that's where the 95% the uh, comes from. A another factor w uh, that you have to consider when it, it comes to uh, consumers' uh, likelihood to, to use your services is what we call webographics. And these are factors that include uh, usage location, where your consumers are, using, are likely to use your services from, whether it's from home or from work, uh, which devices are your consumers uh, likely to use your services from. So uh, we, we, we talked about uh, cross platforms uh, earlier before that these days people have a possibility to use different devices when it comes to accessing the internet. It could be mobile devices, you could be a PC, mobile phone, tablets. So you need to consider which kind of device your consumers are likely to use when they access your services. And as we said uh, last time when we talked about uh, content placement on your site, you need to make it possible for your consumers to access your sites regardless of the device they are, they are using. So, and also you need to consider the connection speed that uh, they, they have. So, in some countries, this, the speed is uh, quite l low, and for that matter, uh, services such as uh, video or music streaming may, not, may be quite challenging. Internet service uh, providers and their influence is also another factor, experience level of the users. And this uh, has to do with the kind of uh, interface that you may have on your, uh, on your site. Because when people are more experienced uh, with using the, the internet, then it means uh, they, they might be more willing to uh, accommodate a much more complex uh, interface. But also, they, might be, they may be willing to do even much more complex uh, transactions on your website. The type of usage, usage level is uh, pretty much related to the factors that uh, we, we have discussed, that how do they use and to what extent do they use. So all these factors will help you to decide what kind of offerings these customers are likely uh, to buy. So related to that, there are different motives for customers or for people to use uh, internet and uh, online based uh, uh, channels. But uh, these factors can be divided into four, factor, uh, four uh, categories. And these are general factors that are determined uh, people uh, use of, uh, not determined, but these are kind of reasons that drive people uh, uh, when it comes to using the, the internet. So the first one is uh, research. Uh, that is, people use the internet for searching information. We all do that. The second one is uh, communication. Uh, we, we use it uh, to, to send and receive me messages uh, to friends, whether it's uh, or to organizations and so on, whatever information that you uh, you, you might think of. So when we are, say, on social media platforms, uh, we can use it for uh, communicating with our friends, family, and other people. We also use surfing, uh, in particular <coughs> entertainment. Uh, probably today the, the, uh, the internet is the, the, the major source of entertainment for, for most of us. So it's a uh, uh, one of the important uh, motives for being online. And also, 
shopping, but increasingly, most of us are buying things uh, online. So these are main uh, motives, but these motives, of course, could be divided into uh, other sub-motives. So for instance, when it comes to communication, we, 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 we like to be part of uh, communities. And uh, with the internet, it's uh, very easy to interact with other people uh, in communities that would be difficult uh, to, to form if internet were not there. So through internet, we can be part of uh, both local and international uh, communities. And also entertainment, product trial, information, transactions, uh, gaming, uh, doing survey downloads, interaction, search, exploration, news. So these are different uh, reasons uh, uh, for which people would use uh, the, the internet. And of course, uh, I would say something about this. It's very, uh, the importance of knowing uh, these uh, reasons is then it will be able to help you decide what kind of services that you should provide uh, on your website or what kind of incentives you should uh, place on your website to attract the, the traffic. So it's very common these days that uh, website or companies are trying to use game elements in non-gaming uh, context. So for instance, you provide an opportunity for people to earn points uh, on your website when they engage with your uh, website. Uh, that's uh, uh, it's a response to recognition of the fact that people like uh, gaming. And if you try to gamify uh, your, your services, you are likely to attract uh, uh, traffic. And likewise, uh, news and other reasons. So the most important uh, thing that you need to know here that you need to know the reason why your consumers are online and how you can use their preferences or their interests and integrate it as part of your uh, services to, in order to attract them uh, to your platform. As I said uh, earlier, the experience uh, of using uh, internet develops over, over time. Uh, from time to time, we, we, we acquire more experience. We become much more uh, comfortable using the, the internet. And it differs from person to person. Some people are, uh, completely try to refrain from using the, the, the internet because they are so much afraid about uh, what is going on on the internet, the security issues, privacy uh, threats. So they would use the internet just for basic applications. But as you become more experienced, then you are more likely to use the internet for even more complex uh, uh, services. So this is a graph that is showing a general uh, trend or a development curve when it comes to the use of internet. So most of us in the beginning, we will use the, the internet for simple applications like email or use the search engines for searching information and other things, uh, all for surfing, entertainment. But uh, over time, we, when we, as we develop uh, experience and become much more comfortable with using the internet, then you can start researching uh, about for, for the purpose of making uh, purchase, uh, purchases. Also, you can make some small uh, purchases. And over time, you can start making quite uh, complex uh, transactions. And this, uh, as I say, depends on the level of uh, experience. And experience also is determined by what kind of uh, the kind of experiences that we have had in the previous purchases. If you have been, uh, say, you have experienced some frauds, or somebody you have experienced, say, identity theft, or you try to buy something online and they didn't send it to you, then you will have a, a quite a negative experience with online purchasing. And you are likely to buy things uh, online might be very low. But if you have experience, your, if your experience is quite positive with buying things that you have never uh, experienced any trouble when, it, when you bought things online, then you are more likely 
to use the internet even for much more uh, complex uh, transactions. So far, we, we have considered the, the consumer uh, market, that is business to consumers uh, transaction, where your business is selling to consumers. But uh, sometimes we, you, you might have uh, offerings for business clients that your customers are other businesses. So in this case, you also need to consider the environment uh, of these uh, businesses. And it's quite different from dealing with uh, co consumers. And this is because the demand of uh, business clients is determined not only by the type of uh, the businesses that you are dealing with, but also by individuals that are representing these organizations. Because in theory, we say it's, uh, it's the company or it's the other uh, uh, business that buys from you. But we know that in these businesses, it's, other, it's people that are representing these uh, organizations. So the factors that determine the likelihood of this uh, of other companies to buy from you, in this case, the demand from business clients, depends not only on the organizational factors or like the type or characteristics of the organization, but also factors that have to do with the individuals that are working in those uh, uh, organizations. So basically, the variation in organization characteristics is determined by those factors. So we have two main factors. We have to consider the organizational characteristics, that the type of uh, the, the attributes of the uh, businesses that you are trying to deal with, and also the individuals that are working for these uh, organizations. So first, uh, characteristics of the organizations. And this has to do with the size of uh, the company, the se industry, sector, and products, organization type, division, country, and region. So just like when you deal with consumers, when it comes to dealing with businesses, you also need to consider their characteristics. What type of businesses are you trying to save? What, kind, uh, w what is the size of these uh, organizations? And with these factors, it will determine what type of products they will buy from you what uh, the quantity that they, they will buy uh, from you, and the kind of transactions, the kind of uh, ar arrangements that you will have, uh, you will have with these organizations. For instance, when you are selling to uh, small and medium enterprises, the negotiations tend to be quite informal, and sometimes this may base on uh, relationship, personal relationships. But large uh, corporations, like say. Uh, like Rolls Royce, they have quite complex uh, purchasing procedures. It's not like you can just go step in and talk to someone informally and start business the next day. They have a quite uh, a formal and complicated procedure. So the type, the size of organization will determine to, to a large extent uh, the type of um, arrangements that uh, you, 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 will, you will have. But the second factor is uh, the individuals that are working for these organizations. They have a, a quite important role to play when it comes to determining uh, closing deals uh, with uh, organizations. So you need to consider role and responsibility of, of, of these individuals. So if you want to sell to an organization, you need to know the person that is res responsible for getting the, the transaction through. And what role do they have? What kind of decisions can they make? The department, and they, of course, when knowing the, the person is related to knowing which department is involved in, uh, in purchases and what power uh, do they have? Is it the purchasing manager that has the final say when it comes to purchases? Is it the CEO of the company? Or is it the board of directors that have to uh, approve certain uh, transactions? And of course, it differs from type, uh, from type of transactions, the amounts that have to be uh, spent. Uh, the larger the, the amount uh, of money that the organization have to spend, in most cases, the more complex the decision-making process 
becomes. So when it's petty items, uh, I would say that probably the purchasing manager would have the authority to, to approve such transaction. But when the purchase is quite complex, then more people will be involved. So you need to know if you have a, a business where your target customers are other businesses, then you, you need to know who is responsible for approving this uh, d decision, which uh, authority do they have, and how much can they approve, and so on. And also, say demographic factors, uh, the sex, age, and possibly group would have uh, an impact on that. But I would say these factors, they have an effect, but to a very limited uh, extent, especially to large co uh, corporations things are very formal. So the age or sex or, or of uh, an individual will not determine much the, what kind of uh, transactions you, you're making with an organization. Because in most cases, these organizations will have policies, set of instructions, guidelines, uh, how transactions to, should be conducted. So they have an effect, but not uh, that significant effect. It's 3 o'clock, we take a break and continue in the second se session.